Finally back home this week, take on uh, Nevada on Saturday. Uh, Bulls looking to improve to three and one on the season for the first time since 1996. So Bulls, or uh, Coach, we're going to open up with a statement and we'll uh, take questions. It's good to be back home uh, for, for the next couple games, especially this one uh, uh, with uh, feels a very good opponent and a, a team that's been tested as well uh, to finish out our non-conference season, a team that's uh, played two top 25 uh, teams back-to-back -back weeks. Um, you know, come, we're coming off an outstanding defensive performance down in, uh, down in Florida. Um, you know, I think the story's been out there already. Uh, 23 points by the defense, three defensive touchdowns in, in, in different ways, I guess, by a defensive lineman, linebacker, defensive back. It's pretty unique. Uh, um, but uh, as we as we head to this week, we, we've got to improve offensively. We've got to be able to sustain drives and, and establish ourselves offensively and continue to progress on defense uh, if we're going to have a chance to win this game. Is there any frustration in that? thought the offense would come through for you a lot more than maybe it has minus the first week and then your defense may be exceeding expectations a little bit um, to get those two together. Yeah, you're, you're kind of waiting for that complete game. Uh, you know, uh, you know, starting out the non-conference season with with Albany, and and, and that was a you know a good first opponent for us. But uh, and you go to uh, to play a Penn State, a Power Five conference school, and now it's kind of come back to you know Conference USA and Mountain West. It's it's probably more in in where the the Mid American Conference lies, and and we've got to be able to take a take a more positive step offensively and, and, and really improve ourselves special teams wise as well and kind of put the whole thing together. So um, you're always waiting for that perfect game and all, all things to come together and, and we're going to need to take that next step. Looking at the video, uh, you know, of the defense, what, uh, you know, were there a couple people, what were some people who stood out or what was your takeaway um, from that defense? Well, I think the one that's talked about uh, a little bit, I, I think that's really he keeps emerging as a player who's making plays for us is Brandon Barry. Um, I think in, in our short time here, Brandon's really matured. Uh, he's taken his game up a notch as a junior linebacker, finally getting a chance to to, to, to play on a regular basis, and we're going to need that from him. Nick Gilbo continues to play pretty solid as well. Um, you know, we're we're getting we're getting solid play up front. Um, you know, as we continue to rotate, Mark, uh, uh, up there, you know, there's times in the fourth quarter now where we're, that game hasn't been decided. We're, we're defensive line is true freshman, true freshman, redshirt freshman, redshirt freshman, a true freshman corner and a true freshman safety out there. And, and uh, you know, that's, that's a lot of youth out there gaining valuable experience. And uh, I think they're holding their own right now. I think Justin Brandon had 36 snaps. Uh, yeah. You know, could, uh, is it? What can you say about him physically? Uh, is he, you know, maybe. Uh, well, why is he seeing so much time? And what well, can you say about him you physically know, being able to be strong at the point? Well, he's, uh, you know, he's got the size, you know. And here's the thing about Justin: he probably played more offense than defense, uh, you know, in his high school career, and uh, a lot of people are looked at. But when we, when when we arrived uh, on a full-time basis in in January, we looked at him athletically. We looked at his size and, and thought he could he could be an interior player for us. Did we anticipate him being at this stage? Uh, probably not. Probably hoped that we would have been able to redshirt him. But he he's he's played strong and and uh, you know for a young player, you know he kind of hit a little bit of a plateau as we were as we we're getting out of camp but I think he's kind of come back into his own now now again and again being able to rotate those guys is 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 going to be very key but he's got a bright future when you look at Nevada what are some of the things they do well to jump out on tape well I think first of all the the experience in their front seven on defense uh, I think six of them are seniors um, you know again a, a team that has pretty good length in the defensive line that you know it's an impressive group that runs well um, offensively, uh, um, you know the, the 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 zone read game. You know the pistol offense was essentially uh, invented there, and they've continued it through Coach Pullian's now transition there. They they're still using it. They're using the zone read game, yeah, so that, pros, uh, that proposes uh, issues for you defensively. You have to be assignment sound. You you. You, you've got to make sure you see things correctly, being gap sound and, and doing those things or those things get exposed pretty quickly on you. So that's going to be a big test. Some of that we thought um, if uh, 
if AU would have gone with their with their senior quarterback, uh, we would have saw some of that. So, uh, it, um, but uh, we didn't. So this will be a, a first uh, full test of, of that type of scheme. Uh, receiver wise, again, good speed and length. Uh, um, you know, sometimes uh, I think schools out west that uh, this is probably in, in my estimation of, you know, when you have the California junior colleges out there, you can and it's close by and you recruit junior college players. Um, it can be a huge benefit for you because you can instantly um, gain players with it with college experience beyond high school. And I think that really can supplement your depth and really help your program. And and they're able to, you know, infuse some speed and. And along with experience. Has there been one big reason why the offense hasn't been able to find a good rhythm for a couple of weeks now? No, I wish there was. You know, if there was one thing that we could, uh, you know, put our finger on, it could probably be a lot more uh, uh, easily uh, addressed and corrected. Um, there's there's things in drives that and we came in at halftime, you know, it's, 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 it's you know, 10 of 11 doing something right, 9 of 10 doing, or 9 of 11 doing something right, excuse me. Uh, there's some things there that we just, we, we just have to get more consistent. And, and, uh, and we need and we to, because there is some experience on that side of the ball with where we're at with our seniors and, and different things. We, we've got to be able to click a little bit better and, and hopefully being back at home will do that for us. Did, did you think Florida Atlantic's defense gave you trouble with their defensive team speed? Or was it as much you as them? Uh, you know, I have you have to give them credit. Uh, you know, again, we it isn't anything that we didn't think. I mean, there wasn't like a lot of all. You know, they came out with something completely new. Now, was there something that, uh, um, like I said, that they threw at us? I think you have to give them a, a compliment of, of execution and and what they've done too. And um, and we knew that would be difficult, but maybe not quite to the level of difficulty that uh, we had. And, False starts. I mean, the last two weeks. Do yeah. you think uh, being at home hopefully might solve some of that? Or uh... I hope so. Uh, I sure, you know, uh, you know, but I don't. You, you know, you were there. I mean, it's you know, being in front of 90, and then I saw your estimation. So uh, you know, I, I think there's a significant difference. It wasn't. It wasn't on the availability to uh, hear. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's a matter of. Concentrating, being you know whether it be a play that's being checked, and sometimes you know when when you check plays, you know you're going to go to a to a different snap count or and uh, and things like that. So guys have to stay locked in. How seriously do you take do you take a team like Nevada, a team that's given up 44 uh, consec uh, points consecutively? Back back well, uh, extremely because I look at the two teams that they played. You know, you're, uh, it doesn't take long to watch an Arizona offense, and um, that's pretty uh, high octane as well as what what A and M is uh, continually climbing up the the, the top in the polls. Uh, they're they're an, that's pretty impressive football teams that that they've played. So, um, and. Uh, you know, much like us, I think it's going to be a good test. So, I, I you got you have to look at not just that you, you spend your mind just looking at you know that stat column and things, but you better take into account who they've played too. Have they, their offense to have they spread the field most of the time, or will they power up? They'll yeah, they'll power up. I, you, they use a lot of f different formations, and, and you'll see some full extra fullbacks in the game and, and and things like that. And they'll bring one back, and they, they do a lot of different. Things. Very creative. I you know I, I think there's some similarities in philosophy and some of the things that we're doing, except they probably implement a little bit more quarterback run than than we do right now. What other adjustments are you trying to make uh, up on up on the game? You know, it's not like we're going to scrap what we're going to do. We just have to get a little bit better at, at what we're doing execution-wise within, you know, uh, within our offensive ex execution. Uh, I think we have to continue to get better in special teams and, and uh, try to find some ways to get ourselves back into uh, uh, making making our return game give us, a, you know, an extra first down or two with, with, with that return. Well, you know, again, when I when I first got here, I thought this was kind of a neat thing, and uh, you know, Joe Lakata helped me, uh, you know, with uh, you know purchase one right away. I've had this since last spring, um, and uh, 
you know, I've always kind of embraced wherever I've been of, of being part of the being part of a community, and and this is such a sports town, uh, crazy atmosphere and everything that's going. Whether it be right now, whether it be the Bills or the Sabers, the Bandits, whoever it is, and I know uh, my family's all embracing. And we're hoping that uh, you know uh, the city of Buffalo and all of Western New York will uh, you know get out to UB Stadium this week as well as as well as next week and help create that home field advantage that that we need. Coach, most of your points have no. been scored uh, in the third quarter. Do you think this is sufficient enough looking forward going into conference play? Well, uh, you know, I'll take them whenever we can get them, honestly. But I think that's one thing that uh, if – if there's something that's positive from that, you'd like to get you know more in bunches. But the good thing about that is, if if we're going in at halftime, we're analyzing the situation, making adjustments, looking at things that we can do better. If that, I you know I don't spend a lot that much time studying that. But uh, that I guess if there'd be a positive where we're at offensively, that is. But uh, have to keep in mind off this last week that most of those were defensive points as well. So when you just look at when points are scored, you got to remember where, where they're coming from. Do you think the fact that uh, there's some people on the Nevada coaching staff that have been affiliated with UB in the past, do you think this sort of uh, paints a target on your back? I don't want a target, but I'm sure it's going to be uh, uh, you know some extra emotion for them. I, I'm sure. Uh, you know, Coach Pullen and, and you know the with family history going to high school here. I've I said earlier is that he is. Um, at our national convention last year, I was um, walking the halls and he came up, introduced himself and, and told me how much I was going to enjoy living here, how much our family would, would, would enjoy living here. And, uh, and that was very true. Um, so I'm sure I know he's, he's very excited. I saw him again this summer at some camps. I, I know they're, you know, I'm, I'm sure it's special to, to him and his wife. And um, Coach Hoffner is, uh, um, you know, being a coach here that helped lay the foundation. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to meeting him because anyone that's put time and effort here, I think, has helped get us to where we are today. And I'm sure there's other people. I know they've got a couple of grad assistants, I believe, that also um, Coach King, I think, played running back here. And so I'm sure there's a lot of things with it. But at the end of the day, it's still going to be the players. It's still going to be how what's done between the lines. Just out of curiosity, coming from a Division Three program, what uh, differences have you seen uh, the past three games so far? Oh, I think each game's been unique. Uh, you know, um, I haven't had to take a long, long bus trips. I think we got on a plane. That was kind of cool. And uh, I, you know, I think each one, I, I, I try to keep it all in perspective. I think it's things like this for, for me personally. Uh, but, you know, once a game's kicked off, you know, there's, there's, it's a lot of the same. It's probably more same once, once I go down to the field here in a few minutes than it is different. It's probably the management of people and, and coordinating efforts, making sure people are on the same page as much as uh, the actual football and the coaching part is different. It, it's probably more the outside things. Cool. Right, thank, you. thank you, everyone, for coming out.